Good day everyone, my name is Mesa S. Papa and I will be your discussion for today. I will tackle about the mean from group data. At the end of this lesson, you will able to first identify the two methods in computing the mean of, from group data. Second, enumerate the steps that is used to get the mean from group data and compute the arithmetic mean by completing the table that I will show you later. What is the mean from group data? Mean from group data is a form of frequency distribution is applied when the number of cases is 30 or more. There are two methods in computing the mean from group data. These are first, midpoint method, and the second is the class deviation method. Let's tackle first the mid-midpoint method. Mid-midpoint method is done by getting the product of the midpoint and the frequency. The formula is as follows. The arithmetic mean is equals to sum of the product of midpoint times frequency over the number of cases. So let's look at this table. So, so, let's compute the arithmetic mean by using the mid-mean point method. So, in this table, so we have the class limits. Class limits is the minimum and maximum value of class interval may contain. So, frequency, this. The frequency is the number of times the event occurred in an experiment or study so we have in this frequency we have a total of 50 cases we will find the midpoint and mean of this group data let's first get the midpoint so the, to get the midpoint we need to add the lower class limit and the upper class limit and divide it into two so that is midpoint is equals to 96 plus 100 divided by 2 is equals to 98. So I already wrote the midpoint of all class limits. Our next step is to get the summation of the midpoint and frequency. So first we need to multiply the midpoint by its corresponding frequency. So it's like 3 times 98 is equals to 294. Again, the frequency multiplied by the midpoint. So, 5 times 93 is equals to 465. Now, I want you to compute for the summation of the frequency times the midpoint. First, you need to multiply the midpoint by its corresponding frequency. And then, add all the product to get the summation here. You may pause this video and get back as soon as you finish. to get the mean of this group data okay so first is our summation of the product of midpoint times frequency is 3740 let's substitute that here over the number of cases, which is 50. Is equals to, so when we divide it, it is equals to 74.8. So this is our answer. This is the mean of our group data. So remember to get the mean, Using this midpoint 
method. So, step one is get the midpoint. Step two is multiply the midpoint by its corresponding frequency. So, frequency times midpoint. Step three, get the summation. Is the sum of all the product of frequency and midpoint. And the last is use the formula to get the mean. So, is that clear? Okay, to another method, which is called the mean class deviation method. So, this method gives the shorter way in computing the mean in form of frequency distribution. So, this is commonly used by classroom teachers, so like us, future educators. So, in computing the mean, since the shortcut may save time and effort. So, mean class deviation methods deals with the deviation of observed values instead of row scores from arbitrary origin in any class limit. The point of origin that is arbitrary chosen is zero. So, if class limits are arranged from lowest to highest, above zero deviation is negative and below it is positive. So, the formula is as follows. The formula is the arithmetic mean, again. So, it is equals to midpoint origin plus class interval. So, sum of the frequency times the deviation over the number of cases. We will use this table again to get the mean using the class deviation method. So, first, you may choose any of the temporary arbitrary origin from any of the class limits. So, so in this case, I will choose the 71 to 75 class limit. Okay? Second is assigned to class limits coded values started with zero at the origin and above zero deviation is positive values and below it is negative. So, in this corresponding class limit, so we will find the deviation. We will assign. So, 71 to 75 is our origin so this means it is equal to zero so anything about the zero is positive so zero one two three four and five so anything under the under our origin is negative so negative one Negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. Okay, for our third step, so we need to multiply the deviation to our frequency. Okay, so 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 4 is is 20 okay so just like what we need what we did before i will give you a time to complete this column so you may pause this video and be back as soon as you finish So we will add them. So first is 15. We will add anything above 0, which is the positive numbers or integers. So 15 plus 20 plus 12 plus 6 plus 10 plus 6 is equals to 63. So 63. And then we will add everything under under our origin okay so six plus negative six plus negative eight plus negative nine 
plus negative 12 and plus negative 10 is equals to negative 45. So, 63 plus negative 45 is equals to 18. So, our summation is equals to 18. And for the final step, our step 5, so we need to compute the mean using our formula and we will substitute all the given data. Okay? So, arithmetic mean is equals to midpoint origin. So, our mid, this is, this is our class interval, and our midpoint origin is 73. Okay, so 73. Next is our class interval. For our class interval, it is the number of interval between 71 to 75. So 71, 72, 73, 74, and 75. So our, our class interval is 5. Times the summation of the product of frequency and deviation. So, our summation is equals to 18. And for number of cases, we have 50. Okay, so we will compute this. So, 73 plus 5 times 18 is equals to 90 over 50 is equals to 73 plus 90 over 50 equals to 1.8 so 73 plus 1.8 is equals to 74.8 so that is our mean for this group data as you can see the mean value we obtain in this class deviation method is the same with the mean using the mid the midpoint method so for you what is the easier method to use so it's up to you whether it is the mean class deviation method method or midpoint method the answer is the same okay that's it for today i hope you learned something again i'm macy s papa bs ed math major so thank you and keep safe everyone bye